Hello everyone and welcome back to Deersley. This short update will be my last on the Spratt and Winkle couplings. All couplings have their own followers and I doubt that all operate perfectly for 100% of the time. After much testing and running I've got to a stage where I feel I can use them without too much frustration and I do need to get on with operating my goods trains. Much anguish was caused by my lack of modelling experience in this area. The solutions to my main problems appear in this video. If my three videos help others thinking of using these couplings, then I will be happy. Only my goods operations will use Spratt & Winkles. My passenger stock will be close coupled in permanent rakes. My video starts with a short section repeated from Deersley update number 5. I thought these three videos would be more helpful if they contained all my Spratt and Winkle workings. I've had another look at these Spratt and Winkle couplings. I found an article in a 2014 issue of BRM and it showed you how to make a, a jig. I did not pay too much attention when I first did my videos on the Spratt and Winkles to the preciseness of the height of each of the uh, connecting bars and I found I had a, a, a good deal of erratic uh, running when I was operating and testing some of my goods trains. The jig is quite simple I built it from laminated uh, bits of plastic card so that it fits inside a rail and has a small platform which uh, roughly aligns with the centre of the buffers uh, on each of my trucks. So this forms a constant. I then, instead of using the coiled wire that comes with the kit, I got some 0.45mm uh, brass rod and cut this up uh, to form the bars. You can see from the photographs, I think, but it's quite a simple way of uh, attaching them. You just lay the bar on the jig, apply some super glue to the buffers, and just run the uh, wagon up until the um, until the super glue takes. Once it's fully dry, I, I just coat the buffer top and the um, and the brass bar again with some epoxy, just to make it a little bit more secure. This more or less is how, uh, how uh, things were described in uh, BRM. I then looked at the way I was fitting the uh, hooks um, and there was no consistency with that um, staple that you need to hold them in place. I think it's important that the pivoting uh, is very free and allows the hook uh, to drop down precisely when it runs over the magnet and bounces back uh, positively. Here you can see one of the underside of uh, a tanker wagon and you can see where I've cut away the section of the chassis where the hook is going and I've built the uh, the gap up with plastic card um, glued directly on the bottom of the body of the tanker wagon. This isn't actually glued on the chassis. The hook, when I finished, uh, will uh, fit in that space, like that. Here is one um, I've completed with the staple and the paddle, um, so that you can see how it actually moves. And the movement there is quite uh, smooth and easy. One of the ways I've done that is to drill out the uh, staple mounting holes on the paddle uh, with a pin chuck and a fine drill. The staples are 0.45 millimeters in diameter so a drill of 0.6 millimeters uh, just gives enough freedom of movement to make sure the, uh, the paddle operates smoothly. These small uh, broad-nosed pliers from uh, Draper enable you to 
make the width of the staple needed uh, quite accurately. So uh, with just some of the wire I grip it, hold it, okay and with that I can bend it and then form it neatly to make a nice square staple shape. It's a bit awkward doing it underneath the camera lens um, but you can see the shape is um, quite a positive uh, right angled shape which is which is perfect for um, smooth operating of the uh, paddle. In order to mark the position of the paddle uh, before drilling um, I hold the paddle in place and mark through the two holes. I've used a bit of blue tap to hold it here uh, just because it's probably going to be a lot easier to do the video like this but in, in reality you can just hold it with your fingers. I just use an ordinary household pin and I heat it up on a um, tea light flame and when it's hot I just mark the plastic through the hole and then when I take that off I should have two little black marks there and there which show the position of the drill and then simply with a um, another pin chuck and a 0.45 millimeter drill I'll, I'll drill through those and fit the little staples with the paddle in place and the staple engaged um, in the holes in the uh, plastic I can drive the staple home now um, using a soldering iron and the heat will just melt the plastic and I just push it into place until I'm happy and that saves gluing it and saves the risk of gluing it up so that it is no longer smooth in operation. You know this must move quite freely. So I did it a bit at a time that's not too bad I think I'll test that before I do any more Okay, so I'm happy with the position of this one and I'm testing it uh, for smooth operation over the magnet. And that works fine. Snaps down and immediately returns. So when I hook it up to a wagon, that works fine as well. And then I can uncouple perfectly. I can push forward, leave it, push forward, hook up and that's fine. My aim is to get all my wagons to operate exactly like that. I'm now going to run a continuous unedited clip to show whether the tankers will decouple when they go over the uh, magnetic decoupler. The uh, oil drum here indicates the position on the track of the decoupler and um, I also want to see that they safely uh, cross through the points here. And to prove uh, they will uncouple, 
I'll now reverse the uh, shunter and uncouple the train. Yep, all seems to be working fine. Well, I hope you found this and my earlier videos useful. I am fully committed to these couplings. Many thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.